In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your photos go from looking like this to this before you post them onto Instagram because like nobody wants to post that first photo onto Instagram. That second photo though, mm -mm, that is what you want to post. So the last couple of months, I've been editing my photos in kind of a different way. I've been paying more attention to the actual editing process of my photos rather than just like open them in Lightroom, play around for five minutes and then post it onto Instagram. So I do think the style works on a lot more photos than just like a particular photo that has this perfect exposure or something like that. So that is what I'm gonna show you in this video. So the most important thing to be able to edit your photos in Lightroom is going to be that you are shooting your photos in a raw format and not JPEG. Because if you're shooting your photos in JPEG, then it's gonna be really, really hard to like pull down those highlights and up those shadows and adjust the different colors because it's gonna be a lot of artifacts in the shot that you can't get rid of. But when you're shooting in RAW, your camera's gonna save all the information off the photo into that RAW file so you can adjust a bunch of different things when you get into the editing process. So unless you aren't already shooting in RAW, I, hi I highly recommend you start doing that. And if you already are shooting in RAW, then you already know exactly all the things that I just said. But uh, yeah. Let's uh, get started, okay? All right, so when you've imported your photo into Lightroom, then you wanna go up here to the Develop tab so that you can get all the different sliders here on the right side, because these are the ones that we're gonna use to get the look that we wanna have. So when I took this photo, my like goal was to expose both for the highlights and for the shadows. And this is something that is really hard because if you overexpose it, then the sky is gonna be totally blown out and it's gonna look like this. It's not gonna be able to recover when you get to the editing process. And if you underexpose the shot, then it's probably gonna look like this and it's gonna be really, really hard to get that like high quality in the shadows back because you know, a camera can only do so much. So depending on what kind of shot that you wanna have, try to expose your photo as good as possible because the better the exposure, the easier it's gonna be for you to edit the photo when you get to Lightroom. So the first thing that I wanna do in this shot is that I wanna bring back some details in the highlights of this shot. So we're gonna drag the highlights way down, well, like to minus 100%. And then I wanna like reduce the contrast of the shot as well. So we're gonna drag this down to somewhere around like 40. So we got that really like matte, washed out kind of look. And then I wanna add in some more temperature because this was during like golden hour in the morning, so during sunrise. So we're gonna drag that up to somewhere around there, that should be fine. And we can adjust the tint as well, so we can get a little bit more of those like purplish tones into the shot. Then what I do is that I wanna bring back some clarity into this shot. I wanna make the pigeon look a little bit better. I wanna make the like this part here look a little bit better as well. So we're gonna drag up so we get a little bit more details into the shot, but we don't want to overdo it. We don't write all the way up there. So we're gonna drop it to like plus 35 or something like that, I think. Yeah, that's gonna be good. And as you can see, the shadows are still a bit dark in this shot. So I want to drag up the shadows to somewhere around plus 40. Looks good in my opinion. I also kind of want to have a little bit more vibrance into the sky and on the houses here. So we're going to drag the vibrance just a little bit to plus 40. That is fine. And now I want to go down here to the HSL, which stands for Hue, Saturation and Luminance. And I'm going to start out with the yellow tab here and we're going to drag it towards the orange so that the sky it's becoming a little bit more orange, as you can see when I'm dragging this down. So we're gonna drop it at like 37, 40, something like that. And then we're gonna up the saturation just a little bit. And we're gonna drag down the luminance to like minus 30. And then we're gonna jump to the orange one and we're gonna drag this towards the red, just slightly, you know, we don't wanna overdo it to do it like that, but somewhere like minus 30 here as well, I think. And then we want to drag up the saturation on this. Not too much, we don't want to overdo it. We just want to add in some like saturation to it so it looks good. And then we're going to drag down the luminance just a little bit. So we're going to like drop it at like 15. Then I want to go down here to the calibration. All the way in the bottom, you got something that is called the red primary, the green primary, and the blue primary. And this is really fun to play around with because you can change the look completely on your photos just by like turning the different sliders. Like if we were to do like this, it's gonna be like 
wow, it looks completely different than what we had in the beginning. I'm just gonna do some slight adjustments to these down here. So we're gonna drag the saturation of the reds up just slightly. And then we're gonna drag the saturation up of the greens here as well. And then we're gonna drag the blue primary hue towards the left so it gets more like a little bit more orangey look to the photo. So with the adjustments that we've done, you can see that we've come a long way, but we're not there yet, okay? But it looks really good, like we are on the right path. So when we're done down there, we wanna go up to the tone curve. And this is where a lot of things happen, in my opinion, that makes the photo look really, really good. So usually what I do is that I take this and drag this like up, so I make the blacks less black basically. And then I add a point here in the middle, I drag this like down to somewhere around here. And then we go up here, we add another point to make it a bit brighter. Somewhere around there, that should be fine. To the before and after. Yeah, we can drag down the shadow a little bit. And what I did here is that I added kind of a standard S curve to the tone curve as you can see and that makes the photo like less contrasty but also like it looks better in a way i don't know what it is but personally i do think it looks a lot better than if you were to have like all the contrast in it so the difference is kind of huge and then we want to jump back to the hsl and we're going to go to the blue because you can see that we got like a tiny bit of blue here uh on the pigeons and then on the houses like over here so we are going to like just add in a little bit more of that and then we're gonna drag down towards the cyan and then we're gonna jump to the cyan and we're gonna drag that up ever so slightly yep now i feel like the photo looks really really good but we can still do some more adjustments to this to make it look even better and what i would like to do is to add some more purple into the sky here so i would go up here and choose the gradient gradient gradial gradial great what is it called Gradial filter, I think. <laughs> and then we want to hold shift and then you want to drag that down and then we can rotate it just ever so slightly. And then I want to adjust the tint up here towards the magenta. And then what I want to do is increase the whites, but drag down the highlights so that we can get a little bit more pop in the sky. So looking at the before and after, super subtle changes but it adds to the whole image. So now we're gonna go back up all the way to the top, to the temperature, and we're gonna drag this down like ever so slightly to make it just a little bit more blue. I'm actually kind of satisfied with the photo right now, so we are gonna like do the crop so that we can get the final composition to the photo here. Uh, and we're gonna press this button, and then I have it set to like the rule of thirds. But if you wanna change this, you can hit O and then you can go through a bunch of different ones that you can like use when you're cropping your photos. But I'm gonna go for this one. And since I posted this onto Instagram, I wanna make it a four by five crop. So I'm gonna go here to the aspect ratio and then I'm gonna choose four by five. As you can see, like the pigeon is landing exactly like dead on that rule of thirds. So like we're gonna put the pigeon like right there and then we're gonna hit enter. It looks really, really good. But I think this part down here is still a little bit too bright. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna choose a ra gradient, gra blah, 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 gradient filter, and then we're gonna drag this out, and then we're just gonna drag down the exposure of it. You can see that we are reducing the attention that this like piece of wood drew when we didn't have the exposure dragged down. So now our attention goes up towards the pigeon instead. So that is something that I usually try to think of when you have foreground. Is the foreground taking away too much attention from the viewer? Then we want to try to reduce that. All right, you know what? I actually feel really satisfied with the look of the photo right now. So now we are going to open this in Adobe Photoshop. So what you want to do then is right click, choose edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop taking some uh, mid-editing coffee. When you are in Photoshop, the first thing that you wanna do is double tap this layer because then you like release it, it's not locked. And then when you wanna hit Command J to duplicate that because we don't want to work on the actual original layer. Because if something goes wrong, if something happens, if the layer is completely vanished and you're like, 
oh, what happened? Then you can always revert back to that original layer. I just want to do some like subtle stuff to the photo to make it pop a little bit more. I mean like the pigeons look good, the photo looks really good, but we can make this like look a little bit better. So what we want to do is add a curves layer and then we're gonna drag this down and then we're gonna drag this up and then we're gonna drag this down up here and then we're gonna increase the shadows and we're gonna drag this up a little bit more. I once again added kind of an S curve but what we're gonna do now is choose command I to like remove the layer completely and then we want to choose the brush tool and then we make sure that you have the white one and then just like paint it over the pigeon like so I want to paint over all the pigeons that we got in the shot and what we want to do now is that we want to adjust the curves a little bit more we're gonna drag this up just a little bit and then we're gonna drag this down again there we go and then we're gonna drag the brightness up here a little bit more detail a little bit more contrast on the actual pigeons makes them pop just a little bit more and now I gotta say like I kind of feel satisfied with the photo in Photoshop so what I usually do now is that I choose image and then image size and then 1920 on the shortest side so that you get really like high resolution image and now we want to take this photo back into Adobe Lightroom so then we want to hit command s and then go back into Lightroom and down here you can see that we got our second photo already loaded up and ready to go. So we're gonna do the final adjustments to it right now. We're gonna go back to the tone curve, we're gonna drag this up ever so slightly and then we're gonna drag this down and then we're gonna drag it up, look at that, looking good. I'm also gonna add some sharpness to the photo so I'm gonna choose the pigeon here. And then I'm gonna like drag up the sharpening to 45, 50, somewhere around that and drag down the radius to 0.06 maybe and we also want to add like a small kind of vignetting to this photo so I'm gonna go down here to the effects and then we're gonna drag down the vignetting to something like that and the roundness it's gonna be really round and the midpoint somewhere around here we want the feathering to be a little bit more and the last thing that we do is just drag down the tint just a slight bit and you know what I actually like that photo really, really much. And the only thing that you want to do now is right click and then export, export, and then choose the specific folder that you want to save it down to. Name it Pigeon Flying Epic, Epically, can you say Epically? I'm going to say that in Copenhagen. And then make sure that you don't do any compression to it or anything like that. Don't choose resize to fit. Just hit export. And now you can just upload it to Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever kind of like file cloud storage that you got. And then download it to your phone and you can post it onto Instagram. So here's the before and here is the after. So if you want to download the preset for this photo and see exactly the way that I put the sliders and curves and everything else, then you can just go into the link down below in the description, then download it completely for free to check things out and maybe learn something from it. I don't know, but I thought it might be kind of cool to like include a free preset with this tutorial so that you can use it and then uh, maybe learn something from it. So yeah, I really hope that you learned something from this video and that you found this editing process kind of interesting. And if you did, please do give it a thumbs up because it does help a lot. So thank you so much for that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, that'd be highly appreciated as well. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end of the video. And uh, oh, you know what? This was actually really fun. Really enjoyed doing some like photo editing on the channel once again, because it's been a long time. Um, but yeah, see you in the next video.